Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, what we gotta do is figure out which of these following functions here has an inverse function. So notice that we got these four functions here, and then the fifth choice is that none of the above would have an inverse function. Now, for a function to have an inverse function, if you remember from the lecture videos, basically that original function has to be one-to-one. -one or it has to pass the horizontal line test. And so what we can do is we can just go through each of these and see which one passes the horizontal line test, which one doesn't. So starting with number one, we got f of x equals 10. So f of x equaling any constant, we know that that's what? It's just a horizontal line at 10, right? So notice if we run a horizontal line through that, it's going to fail the horizontal line test because there's going to be multiple x values that have the same y value. You can't have that for a one-to-one -one function, okay? There can't be multiple x values for the same y value, right? So notice that this here is going to fail the horizontal line test, so that's not going to work. So we know this one definitely doesn't have an inverse function. Now what about this one, f of x equals 10 to the power of x squared plus one. So this one's a little bit more complex because notice we have a quadratic, it's a composite function. We have a quadratic x squared plus one within an exponential function with this base 10. So the issue with this is you can try to graph it, but on a midterm that's gonna take some time. So if you were to graph it, like if you took this and plugged it into decimals, it actually looks kind of like quadratic. So if you plug in zero for x, you'd have 10 to the power of one, and it would look like this. It just keeps going to positive infinity on both sides. So just by looking at the graph, you can tell it's gonna fail the horizontal line test, right? There's going to be multiple x values for the same y value. Problem is on a midterm, you're not gonna have decimals, you're not gonna have a graphing calculator, and graphing, especially more complex functions, might take you a little while. So what you gotta do is you gotta kinda be flexible sometimes, and you gotta just sort of maybe look at the function and try to think in your head, can I plug in two different x values that's gonna give me the same y value? And if the answer is yes, then the function is not going to be one-to-one -one and it's not going to have an inverse function, right? So you got to be kind of flexible. First off, your fundamentals have to be down pat. So you got to know that for a function to have an inverse function, the original function has to be one-to-one. -one. It's got to pass the horizontal line test. And what does that specifically mean is that there can't be multiple x values for that same y value. Right? So you got to really understand that first. The fundamentals have to be there. So if you're not too sure on how inverse functions work, how one-to-one -one functions work, highly recommend you watch the lecture videos again. But if you do have those fundamentals down, then you can just sort of kind of look at this and be like, okay, if I plug in an x value of negative 1, notice negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2, 10 to the power 2 is 100. And then if I plug in one as well, notice that I'll get two in the exponent again, 10 to the power two is 100 as well. So notice we got two x values that have the same y value. And so we know that this here is gonna fail that horizontal line test. Just in general, whenever I see a bunch of even exponents, like notice we got this x to the power two, then not necessarily always, but I know that there's a potential that it's gonna fail the horizontal line test because then usually you can take an x value and plug in the respective opposite sign as well, and you can potentially get that same y value, okay? Not always, but that's what I kinda of look for personally when I get a question like this. And so when I'm looking at this right here, I can tell that whenever I'm plugging in a certain x value, I could plug in the corresponding negative x value. It's gonna give me that same exponent, which is gonna give me the same y value of that overall function. So right away, I can look at that and be like, okay, that's gonna fail the horizontal line test, right? So number two is definitely not gonna work. What about number three? We got log base 10 x to the three. This one's a little tougher to see, but just a logarithmic function in general 
looks like this. Right, if we have like a log base 10 function, let's forget about the x cube for now. And so notice that this function, just in general, the base function, it does pass the horizontal line test, right? It is a one-to-one -one function, a logarithmic function. And so how is this function going to relate to this one here? Well, notice that the domain of this is x is greater than zero. And notice the domain of this is x is going to be greater than zero as well. You can't plug in any negative x values here because a negative x value to an odd exponent is going to spit out a negative number. You can't log a negative number. You can't plug in zero here. Zero to the power of three is still going to be zero. Can't log a zero. So the domain of this is still going to be x is greater than zero. And basically, how this relates to that is using logarithmic rules, you can actually take this exponent, you can actually bring it down. And so we can rewrite this function as 3 log base 10 x. And so it's basically this function, but vertically stretched by a factor of 3. And so this function, both of these are the same, is also going to pass the horizontal line test. It is going to be a one-to-one -one function. And so the answer to this question is number three, right? That is the uh, function that's going to have an inverse function because it's going to be one-to-one. -one. Now, one thing I want to mention is let's say that this was an even exponent instead. Let's say this was x squared. Well, then this is going to be a lot different because now notice that if I plug in a negative x value, it's going to spit out a positive number and you can log a positive number. Okay, so notice that as I mentioned when we were talking about this function, if I plug in positive 2 and negative 2, they're both going to give me the same y value. So the way this function is going to look, it's actually going to look like this. It's going to be two parts to it. There's, it's still going to be undefined at zero, but now um, you could plug in negative x values here because this whole bracket is going to end up being positive. And so it's going to fail that horizontal line test, right? So if this was an even exponent here, two, four, six, whatever, then, this function would not be one-to-one. -one. But the fact that it was an odd exponent made it be one-to-one, -one. right? So a little tricky. Uh, that's the answer to this question. It's actually number three, but let's talk about number four before finishing off this video. And so notice we got the third root of x to the four plus three x squared minus five. So again, a pretty complex function. We got this polynomial with a degree of four within um, a radical function, the third root of all of that composite function. So again, I wouldn't try to graph this on a midterm, but you could look at it and say, well, look, I'm dealing with all even exponents, then I got this constant. And so notice that I could plug in one into this, I'll have one to the power of four, one squared is one, so I'll have one plus three minus five, which would give us what? Negative one. And then notice if I plug in an x value, negative one, negative one to the power four is positive one, negative one to the power two is positive one, and so we would end up getting that same y value. Sorry, this would be the third root of negative one, which is just negative one. So I was originally correct. I just forgot to mention the third root. So notice that two x values two different x values are giving us the same y value. And so we don't know how this function looks, but we definitely know that these two points are gonna be on the function. And so at negative one, at an x value negative one, we're gonna have a y value of negative one. And then at an x value of positive one, we're gonna have a y value negative one. It's gonna fail that horizontal line test. And we could try a different x value. We could plug in maybe two and negative two. Right, so if we plug in two here, we would have what? 16 plus 12, which would give us 28 minus five, 23, third root of 23. That would be the y value, the corresponding y value. And notice if we plug in negative two, same thing. We're gonna have positive 16, positive 12, 
which would give us 28 minus 5, 23. So the corresponding y value would be the third root of 23 over here. Right, so this function is not going to be one to one, and so it's failing that horizontal line test, and so it's not gonna have an inverse function. Right, so out of all of these, number three, it's this function here that has an inverse function because it's one-to-one -one because it's passing that horizontal line test.